Let's move over to another American car company since this is a town and city. That yeah. Be, so uh, there's a, a company called Tesla. What? Who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> And um, actually, we have, we, have, you know, we have a Tesla, it's my wife's car, but I, you know, once in a while I get in. It's a very fast golf cart. You know? It's not your primary vehicle, though, is it? No, it's like your third yeah, car. Yeah. Well, for you, it's probably your thir 30th no, 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 car. No, but, we're, uh, we're all, no, all, all American cars here in Detroit. And, you know what I, and I just get a little nauseous because it's, when you go really fat, like zero to 60 yeah. and whatever it is, but there's no engine sound and there's no gears. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like right. you're on a roller coaster or a golf so cart. So a little cart. whoosh, like, yeah. Yeah, so it gets a little crazy yeah. for me. Um, so, so, Give us your thoughts. This is guy, you know, this guy's he's a, he's a, you know, he's... He's, a, he's an icon for this bull market. Right. And yeah. he's, and he is, he's, he's building cars and in automated vehicles it's going to turn into soon and he's got space stuff going on. Yeah. I don't know, he wants to go to Mars? That's his goal. I mean, I thought Mars sucks. I mean, you look at Mars, <laughs> Mars sucks. I mean, Mars is like negative 80. There's nothing there. It's just red stone dust. Right. Well, why do we want to go to Mars? We'll get right. into that later. Right. So, talk, talk, talk to us about Tesla. You're not. You're not. A, you're, you're. I'm you're, not a fan. No. no, I'm not a fan. So, I, it, you know, Tesla, to me, everyone's every bull market has sort of its poster children for the bull market, both good and bad, and uh, and and I believe Tesla is one of the bad ones for this market, and the reason for that is is that that Elon Musk has succeeded in a public vehicle to keep selling a dream and when the dream is kind of becomes a little bit mundane he sells you the next dream but he's raising lots and lots of money this is not an amazon um, this is this is a company that's in a capital intensive business auto oem no matter what he tells you um, and and is struggling and they lose money selling the hundred thousand dollar vehicles they're having problems getting the, the mid-priced vehicle out, and it's not mid-priced. It's actually closer to $60,000, um, as, as, as you can order the Model 3 today. And of course, the response now is to tell you he's got a semi coming out in 2019 and a Roadster coming out in 2020. Both of those, I believe, are not true, in my opinion. He would have to have the production lines already approved for those. They're not approved anywhere that we, we can find. Um, so it's very doubtful he's going to have that semi out in 2019. Yet he's out raising money, both in the form of deposits and most likely a future uh, stock or bond offering on those those sorts of promises. And is he out? Right, what is he at? Three hundred something dollars this year, right now. Yeah, so yeah, three hundred fifty. Is he? Why isn't he raising equity all the time? I don't know. He will be, I think. And and yeah. and and then finally you had stuff like the Solar City acquisition, which just really, really was unbelievably bad corporate governance. So he owned a big chunk of Solar City. We were short it. Solar City, in our opinion, was going bankrupt. The, the model of rooftop solar leasing has moved on to distributed solar. They, they, they got the market wrong. The stock was plummeting. The bonds were yielding over 20%. And out of the blue, he decides that Tesla should buy Solar City for $8 billion in assumed debt and stock. For those of you that are financial people, Solar City at the time was losing $300 million in negative EBITDA a year before the debt service and, and depreciation. And he basically saved, you know, he saved his own equity investment by having Tesla buy him out, which I just think is abhorrent. And, and was how, it, how did the board approve that? The board approved it and the shareholders approved it, and, and you know, without much of a blink, because A, he controls the board, and B, the shareholders believe you know, pretty much anything he tells them. And that to us was sort of a real sign that this thing had taken a dark turn. Now I mentioned to you the, the Enron executive departures. We keep a list of the uh, Tesla executive departures that we've seen. He doesn't disclose them, but we find them via LinkedIn and people send us lead. And it's a spreadsheet now that goes a full two pages over the past couple of years of all the senior people that have left Tesla. They've got there, saw what's happened, and obviously went out. There's something wrong there. And, and you know, on top of that, you look at the accounting. Um, and then finally, my own prediction, based on nothing more than seeing guys like this operate, I think he's going to leave Tesla within a couple of years. Him, you mean himself? Leave Tesla. I think he's going to move over to SpaceX. What, what percent does he own of Tesla? Uh, he has a, it's a, it's a, actually a reasonable amount. It's about Ten billion dollars, twenty billion dollars. Is he selling stock right now? Uh, he's he, his family is he's not, mm -hmm. although he cashed out some to, for his foundation a year or so ago. But I think he will start selling stock once mm -hmm. he becomes the non-executive chairman. And my own view is he'll just sort of leave it to his number two, and he'll be able to say later, "Well, it was fine when I left it." You yeah. know, 
But if you look at the latest Rolling Stone cover story of him a month ago. Is that a magazine still, Rolling Stone? No, I mean, see, it's not online only? Can you get I, buy the I magazine? think you get it online. I think you get it. You can I, still buy the magazine. I remember you bought, used to buy it at Michigan State. You probably yeah, used to buy it. No, yeah, but yeah. We, we, yeah. Also, we, wait, we also bought a magazine, okay. Rob Report. You probably read it when you Rob Report. It. Well, yeah. I, I can't afford that stuff, no, but it's, <laughs> it's aspira aspirational. Yeah, I see, I see no. it. But, but anyway, so, so if, you go back, if you go online or go to, the, go to the head shops or wherever you can get Rolling Stone, I don't know. Um, the 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 cover story and all the glossy photos are him at SpaceX, not at Tesla. Him with a space helmet, him on top of like a centerfold on top of a rocket, and and that was very telling oh, to me. But if you go inside, they're all rocket, they're all rock. And I, I think he's getting I think get, he's getting the world ready for the lateral move over to SpaceX. His dream is to go to Mars. I think Tesla's heading for a brick wall. Um, I think that makes a lot of just no. I've seen guys like this before. He's going to hit the parachute before before the shareholders do. And before he hits Mars, hopefully. That <laughs> so so I, I have just two, or, and we, we're, I think we're down like a minute or so. Yeah, going fast. You're on the Q and A session, right? Just, you know, I, I noticed one comment, and, do, and just two questions. The comment I noticed is I, I've had the luxury or the honor of also uh, interviewing the sort of I guess the mirror image other side of you, but. That would be you know, Warren Buffett in, in these kinds of interviews. But what I noticed is you guys are basically the same. I mean, the way you're, 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 you do the work, you're doing the work. You can hear it and everything that's coming out. You're doing the work, going deep, deep, deep. And you stick to your, and you're ignoring the noise, sort of pushing things aside and sticking. There's not much different between a... Yeah, about like, $100 billion, though. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sooner or later, that adds up. You get to the, yeah, so. Um, the, other, the other quick question, and I meant to ask this earlier, and this, is, this to me is just, I don't know, something doesn't fit with this in the markets, is that why are we at all-time highs on everything? Right. And we have the least amount of IPOs and people going public and companies going yeah, public. That's a good question. For, I mean, that really is a, something's not, not right there. So I think the, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the private markets have gotten very robust, Dan. So, so uh, founders and venture capitalists and things like WeWork and Uber and all these, these unicorns um, really can, can buy now and sell shares in these liquid private markets. The, the, so that's, that's helped. Um, and I think that a lot of them just simply because of that, because they have li the liquidity events now in the private markets, that was the allure, right? They didn't necessarily want the public. They don't want to file. They don't want to deal with people like me. Um, and so why not stay private as long as they can keep getting funding? And that's... that's but, but aren't they under pressure? I mean, a lot of, if you're a venture capitalist, these guys right. that come in... I mean, your your end for most of it is you know let's get you public right and, and get out and right. Get out. But so, now, so. if I'm Kleiner Perkins, SoftBank will buy my stake, yeah. right? I don't have to file it, right? I've got or Alibaba will buy my stake, or there's all these big buyers now, these pools of capital, sovereign wealth funds, who will actually instead of the public, they become kind of let's dare I say it the dumb money, yeah. and 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 are buying the stakes from the venture and the executives. I mean, SoftBank has a document out saying that they have a 300-year time frame. Like, if you read it, it's almost gibberish. <laughs> but, you know, people are like, oh, my God, he's a visionary. Um, and, and so <laughs> I just, I just go read it. It's online. I, I, I urge you, read the SoftBank sort of statement and, and, and from my Oshi son and tell me it's not gibberish. Well, 300 years, was that 1717? Is that... I'm trying to think of 300 years ago. Do I have it right? 1717? Yeah. I mean, that's like, when was, that's like 40 years before Washington was born. Yeah, that's a you, long could, time. Yeah. Stuff can happen. You had, you had a few, few different forks in the road on that yeah, one, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. No. That's just, it, so, so. So they found buyers. And, and so who needs, who needs the, the, the sort of scrutiny that public companies get if, you get the liquidity in the private markets, and you can stay stay private. So, do you think do you think removing uh, Dodd Frank, and or making it easier? I mean, I'll just tell you from our own experience yeah. of whether or not our, our flagship, we would, I mean, we wouldn't even like fathom the thought. We wouldn't have the thought of going public yeah. for that reason, that reason only, right? Why would you want to waste everybody's time? And if you don't need to, to, why would you? Yeah, and, and everything so, else. I, so, I think, so I think you think that. I mean, at least I can't speak. For and me. also, the debt markets have gotten easier for private companies to access, yeah. and and Some, so not mid, not mid, mid American not, business, but business, right? but, but larger companies, yeah. and and so I think there's there's a fair amount of reasoning, and then of course the public money is burning a hole in their pockets, so they've discovered Bitcoin. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we've got the outlet there. So just, uh, just 
one, one or two last things. I will put this there, right? Got the Q and A session will be big here, you know. Um, what do you say when people say to you about these shorts? I, I, and I did it to you, and you had a great answer. Yeah, but what about Amazon? Everyone said to short them too. Yeah. What's the the different? You had a great yeah, answer. Yeah. So, so when I, I started out on Wall Street, I was in investment banking in Chicago, and I was at Blythe Eastman Payne Weber. Our biggest account was McDonald's. So I had this junior guy to immerse myself in the history of McDonald's. And by the way, if you haven't seen the movie The Founder, go see it. It's really a good business movie. And, and it, it, it covers some of what made McDonald's unique, which was McDonald's figured out the realty model. They're in the real estate business, not the hamburger business. And for years in the 70s and 80s, any consumer company that, that was kind of getting some growth and looked like it could be this monster company, people say, it's the next McDonald's. And I always used to say, you know, grumble on breath, there, there was no next McDonald's. And nowadays, when you get confronted with a sort of questionable business model, like a, like a Tesla or whatever, where you can sort of model out, it just doesn't work, right? They're a car company, it loses money. Some will say, yeah, but you could have said that about Amazon, right? I get that all the time. And so I decided to look back at Amazon. And I remembered it from the late 90s. But I went back and recently just did a deep dive into the history, financial history of Amazon. And what I found was the following. Amazon went public in 1997. Their last public offering was in 2001. They've been free cash flow positive every single year since 2001. Um, but the really intriguing thing was, until 2012, when they got into the AWS, the, the basically the cloud, they had no capital in their business. Quite literally, we financed them um, through their retail model that if you bought books or clothes or whatever, you paid them up front and they paid their suppliers in 30 or 60 or 90 or 180 days. And basically, like Dell Computer, that financed their plant and equipment. And, and so for years, Amazon you know, really didn't make any money, but I kept saying, they don't have any capital in the business, right? It's the ultimate efficient machine. Once they started investing in AWS and more, more warehouse, they started making a profit. The money followed the investment, yep. and I know that's one of your dictums. Um, and so there really isn't been a business model like this. Alibaba doesn't have this business model. eBay doesn't have this business model. Um, and, and so there is no next Amazon. And, and for someone to say that a Tesla, which is capital intensive, tons of debt, raises stock and bond offerings every three to six months. Um, as a guy who's going to Mars. As a guy who's going to Mars, <laughs> whatever, you know, and, 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 uh, uh, and by the way, Bezos is too, interestingly enough. Yeah, he's got his own rocket yeah, company. Yeah. So it, it, it was a unique animal. And, and, and same with Apple. People say, oh, you could have said that about Apple. Well, no. Apple has 40% gross margins in the consumer products business, um, you know, and, and, and Tesla's gross margins are 18%. Um, and, and so, you know, down the line, and, and the problem is a lot of these statements don't hold up. When you actually go back and analyze and, and understand what made Amazon unique, you realize it was unique. And, and that for everyone to say, I'm going to justify any valuation, $60 billion on Tesla, or whatever it might be, um, because it's the next Amazon, good luck. Schechter, well, I understand that Schechter's changing their name just to Schechter. Is that accurate? Schechter. Not Schechter this, Schechter that, Schechter, just Schechter. Sort of like Madonna, Cher, Sting, <laughs> Eminem, covers it all. But you guys, I mean, it's, you know, I would like to just thank you for bringing someone like Jim here, and I think you're doing great stuff. And, thank you. Know, you. Connecting, that's just fantastic. So, you know.